So now we're going to talk about cardiomyopathies. These are disorders of the cardiac muscle that cause difficulty pumping blood or filling. And this can lead to heart failure, which we just talked about. So the first one, the story of them we're going to talk about, the first one is dilated cardiomyopathy. As you can see from the name, it's the problem is the dilation of all four heart chambers. And so you get poor contractility. Remember, this goes back to the length tension relationship. But we said before that that increased length will actually increase tension. So why does too much dilation cause poor contra contractility? Well, if you, let's take a look at the sarcomere again. And let's say it's very dilated, extremely dilated. We have our thin filaments, and this is our thick filament here. And you see now that if you have too much length, if it's overly dilated, there's not even any overlap between the thick and thin filaments. And remember, you need that overlap. You need that overlap for the myosin to bind to the actin to get that bridge, cross bridge, and then do a power stroke. So if you overly dilated, you can't even get that. So now you have very poor contractility. Now there's a lot of etiologies for dilated cardiomyopathy. Um, I like the first aid mnemonic. Uh, if you don't want to use that, there's a couple. We can lump it into three um, broad categories. Inflammatory causes, toxic causes, and metabolic causes. So inflammatory, there can be infectious causes such as Coxsackie virus, okay, or Chagas disease. Those can all cause a dilated heart, and that's due to inflammation. You can have non-infectious um, inflammatory problems such as uh, pregnancy, sarcoidosis, or hemochrom hemochromatosis. which is when you have too much iron in your body. Next is toxic problems. So toxic problems include alcohol, alcohol, and um, chemotherapy like doxorubicin. These can cause dilated heart. And finally, we have metabolic causes. So hyperthyroidism, okay? And then thiamine def deficiency. So that's something that we call wet berry berry when you are deficient in thiamine leading to heart uh, dilated heart cardiomyopathy. The treatment here is going to be similar to Huff-Ruff treatment because basically this is an early form of Huff-Ruff and it can lead to Huff-Ruff because of the poor contractility. So you remember what was the treatment for Huff-Ruff? Remember it was sodium restriction, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, diuretics. And if you want to cure this problem, you got to give them a heart transplant. You're not going to improve the contractility of the heart. Once it's been stretched out, it's not going to go back. So you need to transplant the heart if you want to cure this. Next one is a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Hypertrophic means it's, it's hypertrophied. And that's the whole problem here. It's overly thickened ventricular wall. You get impaired diastolic relaxation. So do you remember, is that a huff puff or a huff rough? Remember, that's a huff puff. It's a preserved ejection fraction, but this is a diastolic dysfunction. As in, it's not filling well, it's not relaxing well. It's not relaxing well. So, this can be divided into an obstructive cardiomyopathy and a non obstructive type. The obstructive type has obstruction of the systolic outflow tract into the aorta. So, this is our hypertrophied wall. You can see it's obstructed because this mitral valve is going to come down. It's going to block the outflow. So you can't get, this is the aorta right here, you can't get blood into the aorta because it's being obstructed by the mitral valve. So this is hokum, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. And it happens because rapid ejection of blood into the aorta brings that anterior mitral valve into contact with the hypertrophied interventricular septum, blocking outflow into the aorta. Now, etiology here is normally an autosomal dominant genetic mutation in sarcomere proteins. Okay? So that's going to lead to a thickening. So this is a, this is a congenital, congenital problem. You're born with this. You're born with an over, overly thickened ventricular wall. Clinical features are variable. You can have angina, which is chest pain. Uh, uh, you can have exertional syncope, syncope is, which means when you're sudden fainting, and that happens because you have arrhythmias from stru the structurally abnormal myofibers. 
you can have sudden cardiac death, which we defined before. Remember, that's death from a cardiac cause within one hour of symptoms. And remember, in, in young athletes, this is the main cause. So you have a young athlete that dies, usually it's because they have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and they get an arrhythmia and they die. On exam, you're going to see an S4 sound and a systolic murmur. Um, S4 sound is, is um, due to the thickening of that ventricle. We're going to talk more about that later. And the, the murmur worsens with, with Valsalva. I'm going to explain that later also, but I'm going to explain that here as well. Um, when you Valsalva, you decrease venous return to the heart. When you decrease venous return, you're going to decrease that uh, left ventricular size. So when it's, when this is smaller, you're going to put that mitral valve and the septum close together. So you're going to increase the obstruction. When you dilate it, when you when you increase venous return, the septum and the mitral valve has more space because it's, it's a stretched out mitral valve. So then you can have blood go into the ventricles and into the aorta. But with Valsalva, it goes the opposite way. So you get more obstruction. Finally, on histology, you see myocyte disarray and fibrosis. Okay, that's the that's something that's very characteristic. Myocyte disarray, and remember that's why we get the um the arrhythmia because the um the myofibers myocytes are are structurally abnormal. They're poorly arranged. So finally, our last cardiomyopathy is a restrictive cardiomyopathy. It's due to abnormally stiff myocardium. Um, you can have an abnormal stiff myocardium due to fibrosis or infiltrative disease, for example, from hemochromatosis or sarcoid. So will this be a huff puff or a huff ruff? Remember, this is a huff puff. It's an impaired diastolic relaxation. So there's many etiologies of this, like I just said. You can have amyloid infiltrating. You can have sarcoid infiltrating. You can have hemochromatosis with all that iron going into the ventricular walls. You can have fibrosis from radiation. You can have something called Loeffler endocarditis. This is fibrosis, and it's associated with something in particular. If you don't know what it is, it's eosinophilic, eosinophilic infiltrates in the myocardium. So that's a key determining uh, factor of Loeffler on endocarditis. And finally, we have endocardial fibroelastosis. So this fibroelastic tissue in the heart. And the key thing here is that this is seen in young children. Okay. So unfortunately, you have to memorize this. This is pretty easy. It's basically stuff that infiltrates the heart or fibrosis. And there's a couple types of fibrosis. Radiation fibrosis. You can have um, fibrosis with eosinophilic infiltrates and you have fibrosis in young children. So that's it for our cardiomyopathies.